All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of the Living the Dream podcast. Today on the show, we have John Mendez, who is the host of the Walk to Wealth podcast. John, how you doing? Hey, I'm doing great today. Better now that I'm speaking to you and better now that I have an opportunity to drop some nuggets for your audience. There we go. Love to hear it, man. And we like to jump right in. So if you could start with telling <laughs> us a little bit more about yourself and what you like to do for fun, that'd be great. Yeah, so for me, my main two, I guess, passions or hobbies that I love to do is uh, I play sports I and mean, I grew up playing football. I haven't played in a while after I graduated high school um, and I play, still play, play basketball all the time, hit, hit the gym regularly. And then also in terms of watching stuff, I love watching anime. Uh, that I'm a big anime guy. I've been watching anime for as long as I can remember. And the only thing I've watched now is anime. So, you know, anime has always been a great big part of my life. And so has, you know, football and basketball. Dude, that is hilarious. We're like <laughs> peas in a pot. I used to play football, haven't played since, well, I like played a little bit in college, but I quit really yeah. early in college. And yeah. now I love to play basketball. And I also love watching anime. Right before this episode, I was finishing up a One Piece episode, actually. Are you, are you up to date? Did I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not fully up to date. I, I'm not sure we can continue this interview until you're up to date, my brother. <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead. I'm in the Do Flamingo arc right now. They're in dress. <laughs> so, uh, I see I, you're behind. I'm in Wano right now. <laughs> We're uh, I'm super far ahead. Yeah, yeah. I still I still got some time, but you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. Well, awesome, man. Tell us a little bit about the Walk to Wealth podcast. Yeah. So the whole meaning behind a name is I'll tell you a little bit of context of how it started. And so around August of 2021 me and one of my guys would always hop on facetime you know talk about life goals things we wanted to accomplish and one day he was like yo bro maybe we should start a podcast and i was like you know what that doesn't sound like a bad idea so i procrastinated for about for about four months because he was going back to college i had already left college to pursue real estate and i i knew i still wanted to do the podcast because i wanted to document my journey why? Because so many people, they wait until they become wealthy or successful to start giving back. And I knew I wanted to do something while I'm on the way, but also, you know, have access to reach out to, you know, really successful people and pick their brain so that other people can learn what I'm learning. And after about four months of procrastinating, I finally came up with the name Walk to Wealth. And the whole meaning behind the name is for the 99% of us that aren't wealthy already, it's a long walk. And some may walk faster than others, but what good is sprinting to the finish line if you pass out when you cross it? So that's how the Walk to Wealth podcast came together. I love it. I love it. And do you do it with your buddy? Is it mainly you now? Do you yes. just, you guess? How does that work? Yeah, so I wanted to start it with him, but because he was so busy with college, um, I actually did my first six or seven episodes on my own. And then from there, I've been doing interview episodes ever since. And then I'll occasionally do like a bonus episode where I, you know, I'll give an update of my life and what I got going on and things like that. So like for my 21st birthday, I, I dropped the, you know, uh, here's my walk to wealth at 21 so far. And my very first episode was my walk to wealth. So like I plan on doing it every year where I just kind of do like this like a update of, you know, where I've been and where I've come along and just continually to share my journey as well. Yeah, for sure. There we go. Are you still um, you still involved in the real estate space? Like, what do you do? Has the podcast been monetized such that it can be your full thing? Like, what you got yeah. going on and the occupation side of things? Yeah. So, like, in terms of uh, real estate, I was so convinced coming into it that I was going to be, you know, top realtor, you know, rookie of the year by now, selling houses left and right. And along the way, I found myself distracted. And, you know, I, I also taught some social media classes and I turned that into like an agency. And then, I was getting distracted with that. And then one thing I did in the back burner all the time is, you know, I was consistent with the podcast and dropping episodes. So this year, uh, you know, I've, I'd say around maybe a month ago from the time we're recording this is when I finally started getting very intentional as to what I wanted to do because I was spread so thin for so long. So yeah. right now what's keeping the bills paid is I have a job at the restaurant. Um, and then also I still live with my grandparents. I'm relatively young and I don't, you know, I don't plan on moving out until yeah. I take this, you know, build this empire because, there's no need to, right? Uh, house hacking, you know, we talk about it all the time in real estate. So I still have my, my license, I'm still an active realtor. Um, and I'm just going to mainly keep that open for, you know, like close friends and family and then pretty much refer everything out and just get some passive income through referrals. Yeah, I feel that. So working the restaurant, going hard on the podcast and then uh, referring out some real estate business is what kind of yeah. keeps the things paid for you right now. Exactly. I love it. And so with the podcast, do you see yourself monetizing it through 
uh, you know, kind of ads or are you going to have a business on the backside that's helping people in their walk to wealth? Yeah. So right now I'm planning a virtual summit. So I started a subscription model, right? Because I feel when it comes to ads, some of the times when you take somebody's money, you also take a lot of their BS that comes with it. Yep. I'd hate to be in a situation where, I mean, I don't talk about, I guess, topics that would be considered controversial, but I would hate to say, you know, let's say someone curses in the podcast. I personally don't curse, but let's say someone curses and now, you know, the advertiser doesn't want to advertise the episode and they draw, you know, they draw back and, you know, things like that. I, I don't really, you know, want to worry about. So I'm not entirely opposed to advertising route, but that's something that I probably might do in the future with once I get big and I can choose specifically who I'd want to work with. And then right now I have a subscription using Supercast, uh, which is like a Patreon for podcasters, which is super dope. And then I'm doing a virtual summit in March. And the goal of the virtual summit is to draw people back to the podcast subscription. Right? And so um, finding ways, I'm good at getting people together. I'm good at organizing, you know, events together. I already have a ton of connection I'm connected to. Like when the first day I reached out to, you know, all 15 of my speakers, like six of them are already confirmed because I already have a good relationship and good rapport with them. It was like, yeah, of course, John, I'll be on board. So like doing that virtual summit, my main goal this year is really to, you know, build my authority and build my audience. I love it. Well, tell us a bit more about your motivation. So you started the podcast. We heard a little bit of the backstory, but every day, what really yeah. gets you up and keeps you going? Future me, right? There's this, you know, they talked about the levels of connection, right? If you know 100 people, they know 100 people. That's 10,000. They know another 100 people, right? That's... Uh, that's a million. They know 100 people, 100 million. They know 100 people. You're already into the billions, right? So you're about five connections away from pretty much helping out, you know, connecting to the entire world. And a lot of people think that the things we do doesn't matter. And, and you you don't know that, right? Because if, if you don't strive to become the best person that you can be, you're essentially letting the world down. You're And having, you know, kind of intentionally putting the weight on my of the world on my shoulders it's something that I did so that I continue to strive to become the best version I can be because I may not change the world, but I may impact the person that does. Right. So it's like, it's a, it's a never ending pursuit. And as humans, we're not meant to stay complacent. We're not meant to stay in the same place. So, you know, I just like, why not just keep on bettering myself and become the best version of me? So that's kind of the thing that really pushes me. And I also have very, very big goals and, I can't ever reach those goals if I don't do what I have to do now so that that future me can actually manifest. And it's not just a thought that I, you know, 20 years down the line, I still have that thought of the future me and, and didn't actually play out the way I, I expected. Yeah. Yeah, man. I feel you. I'm right there with you on the <laughs> young guy, big goals train. Tell us a little bit about those dreams and goals. What's your vision for your life and your company going forward and your podcast? Yeah. So like, for example, one of the main reasons too, I didn't want to focus with real estate in my area. If you're a top realtor, you're helping about 150 people a year, right? You're doing selling about 30 houses, average family size, let's say five people, 150 people a year you're helping. You're probably making a, you know, a good chunk of change too. You're probably making several hundred thousand, right? If you're a top podcaster, you could easily help 150,000 people. And there's this quote I heard on this one guy giving a speech on Facebook one time. And he talked about passive income. Everyone wants passive income, right? Instead of focusing on passive income, focus on passive impact. How many people's lives can you help while you're sleeping? How many people's lives can you help while you're going off on vacation with your family, right? You focus on passive impact. If you can help 10,000 people while you're sleeping, while you're relaxing, vacationing, you'll make far more money than you probably know what to do with, right? So don't focus on making 10,000 a month passively. Focus on may, maybe helping 10,000 people. And like for me, I feel like my goals just get bigger and bigger. Like I had, you know, my dream set, I wanted to have like, you know, a $3 million net worth. And then I heard people that were thinking bigger than me. And I was like, people think that big? So then I wanted like a $30 million net worth. And I was like, bro, there's people out there that, you know, are thinking about 50 million. So like, I want to do that. But then we have people like Alex Harmozy. He got like a hundred million, right? So it's like, and there's always another mountain to climb, but it's like, I'm just going to keep on climbing, you know, and keep on trying to help people. My, I really want, I'm, I feel called to help young people. I feel like financial literacy isn't talked about, you know, growing up in, you know, less fortunate communities and things like that. 
and that victim mentality BS gets, you know, stuffed on our throats and it's like insane. So it's like helping people realize that, you know, when you start operating out of abundance, you can really build out the life that you always dreamed of, you know, right before your eyes. If you just, you know, switch and you got around the right people and, and put in the work. Yeah, dude, I, I am <laughs> right there with you. I am right there with you. I love the energy that's coming from you. And I really yeah. like that point about passive impact instead of passive yeah. income. Because when you think about money and how money flows, it's only going to change hands if equal or greater value is added in another form. And that's the whole idea behind products or services. You're willing to pay $20 for this because you feel like you get $40 worth of value. And yeah. so- Focusing on that passive impact, naturally, the money's going to follow, and then it can be used as a tool to further multiply that impact. So I really like yeah. what you're saying there. Well, cool, man. Let's talk about some specific dreams and goals. Do you have your passive impact number now? Do you still have the net worth goal? Um, do you have a goal for the podcast this year? Tell us about some like specific goals that you got. Yeah, so my goal right now for the podcast right, is to get to 100,000 downloads. Right, I am a long ways away. This past year, I spent, as I said, distracted. I was dropping weekly episodes, but I was very naive. I thought that if I built it, people will show up. And that is not the case in the podcasting world at all. You have to be a lot more proactive than that. So my numbers were not where I wanted them to be. And so my goal right now is to get to 100,000 by December 31st. I also have another goal of to be on 400 podcasts by the end of the year. And so that is like my main goal specifically for podcasting as for that right now. Um, in terms of long-term goals, I'm not there yet. I don't know how, how many downloads I want to get in the future, but for this year, a hundred thousand, that is the goal. And I'm doing everything I can. I'm speaking at a podcast expo uh, later this month in January. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's going to help, you know, and I'm planning on going to a couple other podcast events to, you know, start getting more exposure and making a bigger dent in the podcasting space for my self in terms of like a passive impact number i haven't generally thought of that yet but in terms of net worth at the moment it's 50 million that is my net worth goal because that's the last one alex hermosi hasn't convinced me enough to get to 100 million yet but i, I i'm sure once i start building up man, I, that eventually is going to be but for the end of this year my goal really is to become debt free, pay off my student loans. Fortunately, I went to a public school. So um and I only went for two years before I left school to get into entrepreneurship. So paying that off and um that is probably like something that I can easily accomplish. And then I plan on doing some virtual summits and I want to host four four yeah, four virtual summits. I got one plan in March and I want to do one at one single day summit every day, I mean, every quarter um, after March. So um, those are in terms of goals for this year that I have planned that I, I really want to accomplish. Honestly, the main goal, I could care less about everything else. You know, if, if I don't hit the 100,000 podcast downloads number goal uh, this year, I wouldn't say it was a failure, but that is my main priority. Yeah, yeah, I got you. So the 100,000 downloads is like that's the main thing everything else is kind of like basically funneling into that goal either helping exactly supporting it exactly. or yeah i got you exactly cool man well with the one hundred thousand downloads is your marketing plan to just get on 400 podcasts and you're hoping that'll get you to the hundred thousand downloads are you also running some ads on other podcasts are you like sending cold dms of like hey check out my podcast you know <laughs> what are you doing to get the word out so podcast guesting is the main priority. Then um also the next one is going to be targeted targeted daily engagement. It's an idea I got from Kevin Schwindlin of the Grow the Show podcast. Um and he talks about reaching out to people and engaging with people on social media who want are in your dream one hundred, right? And so like for me, I spent probably like maybe like three hours like muting everybody that I had on IG and only following people that are in my dream 100 that I would want to be a guest on my show. And I'm just engaging with the people in those comments and um, building awareness. You know, it just, it's not like go check out the podcast. It's like, let's say the topic is about personal finance and credit cards or something like that. I'd say, hey, you know, this is a great way to start building your credit. Or if it's about entrepreneurship, the post, and then by doing that, then I'm funneling people into my email list and the virtual summit. Um, 
the main reason I want to do those is because you, as the host, you have the opportunity to get access to, you know, all these different listeners from all these different people in all these different places and come together. So in the first one, I already have all my speakers lined up and plan and then taking what I learned from the first one to ramp up and doing running advertisements to the virtual summits and then also evergreening them. So it's like a never ending thing where people continuously go to them. So that's going to create my email list. And then once I get an email list, I can further cultivate my, um, you know, my, uh, the audience, making them more willing to enjoy this, listen to the show and then making them more willing to share the show just because all the value that I'm providing. And as you said, money is just a means to, you know, it's a bartering tool, right? It's a token of appreciation. Someone described it. And so if, if you don't have a lot of it, it's because not a lot of people appreciate what you got going on. Now that may not mean that you have a broad product or service. That may just mean that not enough people know about it to appreciate it for what it is. So you got to get in front of more people. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's either a marketing issue or you do have a bad product or service. So <laughs> yeah. You need to make it better. Um, so just let me recap real quick. So you're getting on the 400 podcast then you're doing a daily engagement where you've kind of got your dream 100 and you're, interacting with their audience on their posts every day yeah right mm -hmm. and then the virtual summits you're enlisting speakers from your network maybe you've already had them on the podcast maybe you've just mm. networked with them and these virtual summits are they all geared towards financial literacy i would assume for the most part for the first it's going to be so my main four pillars for my podcast in terms of topics is personal finance real estate mindset and entrepreneurship so the first one i'm doing is going to be you know, um, about mindset day one, day two is personal finance, because if you're not a good steward of your own money, uh, God forbid, you know, someone gives you a lot of money yeah. and then day three is going to be entrepreneurship. And then for my one day summits, I might just go, I'm going to do one on real estate. Cause I know a ton of people in you know real estate space and real estate has made more millionaires than any other industry. And then, um, the other two single day virtual summits are probably going to be on mindset and entrepreneurship. And so those are, as I said, those are the main four pillars that I talk about and that I enjoy talking about. And then um, that's, the, that's also the main four pillars that the show was about. So it's trying to stay in line with all that, because let's say, you know, I have a podcast on, you know, a virtual summit on, I don't know, marketing and they check out the show, my show. I don't really have a lot of, you know, marketing tips and tricks on the show. So it's like that isn't as in alignment with what I got going on. So trying to make sure I stay in that so I can continue pushing people down the funnel. And I'm still developing the funnel as we speak. Like I still don't have my high ticket offer yet. So it's like figuring that out, but I'm building the top funnel right now. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And so will the summits be free or are people going to be paying kind of like a, I forget how Russell Brunson puts it. It's kind of like a at cost ticket price. Like if yeah. it costs you $20 to acquire a customer, you charge them $5 a pop to like join the summit. Like, are you, mm -hmm. or are you doing, Kind of like a one hundred ninety seven dollars summit. What's going on there? Yeah, I'm gonna keep them all free. It's more so it's, it's a numbers game. Yep. And I'll have the upsells and downsells. Like I have a paper right. Ironically, I have a paper right here because I've been planning this stuff out. So it's on my desk of you know my uh my the my tiers that I'm I'm gonna charge. And so of course the lifetime replay I'm gonna charge for it. But now it's just gonna be the lifetime replay. I'm gonna collab with um some of the speakers to give some bonuses as well on their behalf. So like the the re, uh, replays and stuff like that, the tiers that you could buy to purchase is also and not just a lifetime replay is also going to come with, you know, more extra bonuses. And then also um, at the end, I'm going to upsell, you know, to my subscription. I'm also going to have an upsell to one of my trainings that I did on, you know, um, social media marketing, kind of. I mentioned being in alignment, but my, everyone needs marketing. I, that was a bad example earlier, but one of my replays to my training, I'm going to have a downsell to this quick like 10 minute training I did for like nine bucks. And then I'm gonna try to push as many people from the summit into I'm planning on doing a workshop. Mm -hmm. I still haven't put that all together yet. Uh, but luckily for me, I have three months left to put it all together. So I have more than enough time and I'm already way ahead of schedule in terms of, you know, getting speakers and stuff lined up and um, agreed to be on the show because they all have in, on the summit because they all agreed to be on the show already. So it's not like they're random strangers. I actually know all these people. So they're all on board with the idea. Love it, dude. I think that's so awesome. And as long as you stay consistent with it, it's going to blow up. Yeah. 
my main goal for this word for this year is clarity, right? I had shiny object syndrome to for pretty much all last year. So, you know, making sure I told my girlfriend this too, like your main job for this year is just to make sure I don't, I don't try and do a, another idea. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> it's funny how similar the entrepreneurial journey is like, yeah, you know, we all start out, we all get that shiny object syndrome and we're all like bouncing from thing to thing to thing. And it's like, yeah, you build those character traits. Alex Formosi was actually a big part of that for me of like really building the, he talks about how entrepreneurs, three things are holding them back. It's either you lack the skills, you lack the character traits, or you lack the beliefs. And um, one of mine was definitely character traits. Beliefs is also in there. There's some skills in there as well. But the biggest thing was like, I just wasn't consistent, which is a yeah. big part of the reason why I started going daily on this podcast, actually. So, uh, yeah. yeah. I love the I love the path you're taking, and I look forward to following it for sure. I appreciate it, brother. And another thing on that on that consistency route, right? It's a lot of people don't stick with it long enough to see the the fruits of their labor, and so it's like if people could just stick with it a little bit longer, if people just stick with it, you know, one more day, do one more call, do one more, you know, you know, prospecting hour or whatever, right? One more yep. cold pitch, you know. Eventually, if as long as you're not, you know, trying to do a bad pitch on purpose it's like almost inevitable to like n not find success he talks about it too you know it's not about being extraordinary it's about you know doing something ordinary for an extraordinary amount of time mm -hmm. yeah absolutely i love it well speaking of skills what are the top one to two skills that you need to develop right now to take your life to the next level make your dream life come true yeah so for me personally right now the top one to two skills right now is I need to learn how to, I'd say I need to learn how to time block more effectively. I'm not too sure right now. So like real estate, I know how the, a millionaire real estate agent day looks like. I know tons of millionaire real estate agents. Uh, you know, I, I'm part of Keller Williams. So there's this book called The Millionaire Real Estate Agent. So yep. it's like, I'm very well aware, you know, how to structure your, structure your day for success in real estate. I'm still figuring out how to do that for podcasting. What does a million dollar podcaster host? You know, what does their day look like? You know, I'm still trying to figure that out. You know, what are, where do they sit then spend their most time? So time blocking more efficiently and like, I guess, I guess business planning are probably like the, the two main things for, you know, because if you treat something like a hobby, it'll pay you like a hobby. Right. And I really want to grow this and put my all into this. So it's like trying to figure out, you know, where could I, you know, which I've been thinking about joining. I think John Lee Dumas has like the podcasting community. So I was thinking about maybe joining that or something, but figuring out where can I go so that I don't have to learn this all for myself. I can skip the line by having access to someone who's already done it before. So yeah. I guess cl clarity in, around what a what it looks like to become a successful podcaster. I guess I'm not sure too sure if that's a skill. So, but like that's what I need to get to where I want to go to. Yeah. No, I feel that. I feel that. Well, this might be a, a tougher question for yeah. you, then, but the next one is what are the highest impact daily actions that are going to tick the needle forward towards your dreams and goals. And we would ask specifically for podcasting since that's your kind of number one. Yeah. So it's, it's prospecting to be a guest. My, my, I, I'm still taking the stuff I learned from uh, being an agent and trying to apply that into my podcasting space. So from nine to 11 every day is that's when I do my, my podcast pitching. That's when I do my targeted daily engagement with social media stuff. Um, and I try to do the, at least 20 pitches a day from Monday through Friday. And with the targeted social media engagement, I try to do 20 as well. Um, you know, just thoughtful comments. comments. Yeah. 20 comment, comments um, or an engagement with other people um, on social media. Uh, so th that is my highest, you know, I guess, you know, producing activity right now, my highest impact activity is pitching people and prospecting for new speaking opportunities. I gotcha. I gotcha. Do you think, John Lee Dumas would have a, another activity for you to do when it comes to time blocking, or do you think he would tell you to do more of the same? Because I feel like being a guest on shows and the targeted daily engagement, like in my head, a podcaster mostly needs attention coming to their podcast. And yeah. so whatever things are going to get you attention, which it sounds like you have two very good things that you're doing to get yeah. you attention, are going to be the highest impact daily actions. And then 
did you read the one thing by Gary Keller? I know you you read that. I actually I haven't actually read it yet, so <laughs> I, I'm slacking. I have I have the audio book, but I haven't read it yet. My list of of books that I need to read is like <laughs> getting higher by the minute. <laughs> yeah, honestly, um, you can take a page out of Alex Ramosi's book here, and like reading books is fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, you should do it for 15, 30 minutes, hour a day if you can. But with specific things like the one thing, there's a way you can apply that in your life right now because it's a very simple concept. It's like, what yeah. is the one thing, one thing. that is yeah. going to make the most stuff happen? Kind of the Pareto principle. What's the yeah. 20% yeah. of my actions that's going to get 80% of the results? And so, um, yeah, man, I feel like I feel like you kind of got it in the bag with time yeah. those two activities, but maybe he would tell you to do more of them. Like instead of 20 comments a day, shoot for 60 comments a day, shoot for 200 comments a day, shoot for yeah. 40 prospecting pitches for podcasts or whatever. I don't know. Cause I'm not John Lee Dumas, but yeah. <laughs> uh, just sounds like you have a good plan, but mentorship and communities also. Always yeah. So. That's why I'm, that's why I'm looking openly right now. Like, and as I said, I might go to John, uh, the John Lee Dumas route and go with like, he has a thing called podcasts paradise or something like that and if it's not him it's probably gonna be pat flynn like those are two like titans in the space when it comes to podcasting mm-hmm. so it's like you know with the the podcast paradise i think there's also like a, a plan where you can get like a 30 minute strategy session with him yeah. and i know he was in a different place from me where i'm at currently in my life starting off the podcast so of course i always have to take no matter who who does their advice with a grain of salt but it's like the podcast pitching from what i've seen is usually the best way to get your audience in front of people because um, or get your, your whatever it's a service, your podcast, your brand, your product, or whatever, in front of people because, especially if you're a podcast host, because you're already, whoever's listening is already a podcast listener. And so I tell them about the podcast while I'm on a show, it's going to be a lot easier for them if I ran a Facebook ad telling them to listen to my show. Now they have to get off Facebook, go to Apple Podcasts, but if they're already on Apple Podcasts, it's a lot easier. So um, in terms of, you know, where I want to spend my most time is definitely there because all it takes is a couple of good shows and you have a good call to action and, you know, you'll drive a ton of attention back to, you know, your show. 100%. 100%. Awesome, man. Well, what character trait do you most need to develop right now to make your dream life come true? My character trait right now is, I'd say, my most important character trait that I need to develop right now, this second is definitely, um, and I'm still developing it, but my ability to say no, Mm -hmm. I guess that's a character trait, but I've been saying no. And I've been getting a lot better. Like for example, uh, one of my friends, he reached out to me. He was like, Hey John, like I have this, you know, this opportunity. Um, cause he got into life insurance recently. He was like, yeah, bro, like it's way easier than real estate, things like that. You know, um, I already just got a client. I, I just started like two weeks ago. And I was like, Yeah, I can't. Yeah. That's it. I can't. And and being knowing that no is a full is a complete sentence, right? You could say no and that that's it. And for me, it's like really getting better at saying no, whether it's for business opportunities, whether it's for you know, personally, like just saying no. And I'm going to have to say no to a lot of things because the path that I want to head down is a path that most people won't understand unless there's someone like you or someone like someone, the people listening to the show. So it's like little things that people would think are like, okay, a lot of people our age, you know, it's like, Hey, let's go to the bar. Let's go get a drink. And like, but every weekend. Yeah, no, I'm not a drinker. So that would never be a case, but that's just a, an example that most people probably resonate with. But things yeah. like that, it's like just saying no to, you know, the, the way of the average, I guess you could call it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, you, if you want to be like the 1%, you can't do what the 99 do. Exactly. And so that I'm just, just saying no. That's my the big character is get real good at saying no. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I like that a lot. If there were one or two people that you could meet right now, and this could be a specific person or a type of person, and they'd really help you take that next step toward your dreams and goals, who would they be and how would they do it? I would say the first person I would want to meet is probably Gary Keller. Mm-hmm. And I'd want to meet Gary Keller. I mean, I'm also part of Keller Williams, but like I had the opportunity to spend a day with him um, back in, in June of 2022 at a summit for young adults. And one thing I learned from him and he's a billionaire for anyone that doesn't know is that the stuff he teaches and talks about it's almost ingrained in his dna 
Like you would have thought he was programmed, you know, out of the womb to say those things. Like it, it's so deeply ingrained into his very being. And like you could just tell, like that's exactly how he carried out his life yeah. with extreme intentionality, with extreme focus. With you know, so th- he's the one person. And for me, the reason why I would want to meet him, and the number one thing he could do is honestly, most likely, you know, is is to be a guest on my show. Honestly, that is my goal right now. I had so for anyone that doesn't know KW, uh, I had Julia Lachey on the podcast. She's the head of diversity and inclusion for the entire company, um, the president's business partner. I have scheduled for later this month to record an interview with her, and so of course I'm gonna reach out to the president of KW, and then I'm gonna reach out to a couple people in the upper cabinet. At KW because I already got two people or uh, one person and one scheduled kind of right and so it's like then I started reaching out to some of these other people eventually I'm inevitably I'm, I'm gonna ask him right I'm gonna ask him eventually and he's gonna have to say yes because everyone I'm gonna have everyone doesn't matter how many people I gotta ask in his upper cabinet I'm gonna have all of them on the podcast to talk about something so he's number one number two would probably be I would say probably John Lee Dumas and mainly because I've been checking out his stuff recently but he's one, you know, had over a hundred million downloads on his podcast, which is insane. And two, he's also an entrepreneur. So he can also help me with, you know, creating a, an idea with, you know, monetizing the podcast with all these different things. And of course I would have him on my show as well. And so it's like, I'd say the number one thing I probably get from him is knowledge around what does it look like to be a, a successful podcast host? And so what Gary Keller is more so, you know, just learning from him and, you know, how he's been able to achieve the success that he's has and become so intentional, probably go in depth onto the one thing, you know, that, um, you know, how do you find the information to write that book? You know, where that came about, getting into the, the weeds about that. And then with Johnny Dumas, it's like modeling a successful podcaster, essentially. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, the one thing is a great book. In fact, I almost want to go reread it. Yeah. After talking about it. Can I have a a, a runner up? My yeah. third would probably be Russell uh Russell Brunson. Uh, that guy's a genius when it comes to you know marketing and things like that. So he'd probably be the third person that um that I want I would have if I had to sub out one of the two. Like you know, you always know, like play start cut. Yeah. You know, he would he might be someone that's like. You know, that I, I really want to just because he knows how to market, bro. He's that man's a genius. Yeah, <laughs> it's funny. You know, you you see all these entrepreneurs selling things online and kind of doing the digital um, agency, digital business, whatever it is. And then you're like, so where where they all learn this? Like, wh- where are they all teaching this from? And it's yeah. always Russell Brunson. They always yeah. have a click funnels, like one website, one comic club, yeah. two comic club, like award and it's so funny because every entrepreneur i see that is successful online went through click funnels went through russell brunson or yeah they mentored under somebody who like went through russell brunson and achieved really great success and then went off and did their own thing that's kind of similar of teaching people how to run online yeah. marketing businesses so, i inter- you know i interviewed someone and they had a two comma club award on in the back and i didn't know that they knew anything about click funnels and so i'm interviewing him and like I was in the back of my head thinking of how do I shift this podcast conversation to somehow bring up what he got going on back there? Cause like, you know, that, that two comic of award, that means he's doing something on a very big scale right now. Not just everyone gets that award. So I was like, I ended up finding a way to wiggle in the question to ask him about it. And then we went from there, but yeah, so many people know about Russell Brunson, but it's like, it's crazy because you talk to people outside of the entrepreneurship world and he's like, you know, a nobody. Literally. And for those of you who don't know Russell Brunson and don't know the yeah. Comic Club Award, it's like you clear seven figures in ClickFunnels sales. Is that right? Yeah, it's it's, it's seven figures um, with one funnel, with one specific one funnel. funnel. Yep. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. So he's, he's a boss when it comes to marketing, for sure. 100%. Well, awesome, man. We got a couple more questions for you. We're going to run through the thriving three and then we got a last set of questions. Sounds good. Okay. Sounds good. Awesome. So what's your favorite book, movie, or podcast? Pick one. My favorite book is Think and Grow Rich. That book is filled with nuggets. I felt like every word helped me levitate further into the stratosphere after reading that book. And I I say that jokingly, but that book is actually amazing. I think the principles taught in that book, it doesn't go too deep into the weeds. And it was perfect for the time that I read it, 
right? Yeah. And at the time, I was just getting into personal finance and entrepreneurship and things like that. And that book, it's just like, it shifted my entire mindset. I don't come from much. Uh, my grandparents raised me. I grew up in the projects. You know, I yep. didn't grow up with money. Like, and I never wanted to use that as, as an excuse or, you know, uh, for people to throw a pity parade or I never wanted to be, you know, have that victim card. It's like, that's just how I grew up. There's nothing more, nothing less. Right. And like, for me reading that book, I, it really helped shift. And I didn't have a, a negative mindset or a scarcity mindset, but like it really helped me shift into a mindset where it's like, I could do anything. Like, I no, I don't, there's excuses, no limit to, I can do anything. And that book definitely was hands down my favorite book that I ever read. Yeah, uh, dude, I feel like we are carping copies <laughs> of one of <laughs> <laughs> Like just the, the route of entrepreneurship we've taken, like Think and Grow Rich, foundational book for me, Russell yeah. Brunson, John Lee Dumas, not as much for me. Me um, either. I, that's recent. Yeah. That's re like, I'm talking like last week recent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Gary Keller, I jumped in as a realtor post-grad, actually post-college. Really? And I'm really big on real estate investing. Yeah. I'm not a realtor anymore just because I hated selling residential yeah um, just honestly I, I, i'm honestly in that in that same place where like i could care less about residential real estate yeah yeah but apartment syndication is a big thing for me it's something i'll do for uh the rest of my life and so that's really I'm trying to break into right now but yeah my, my first my first guest was a syndicator she's also my uh, real estate coach but mm. she had to leave coaching because she was getting too big with the real estate syndication stuff she is she does 503 um 506b and c stuff Oh, yeah. Um, but she's mainly in the C route. Um, so a lot of her stuff is accredited, but she has a lot of stuff going on, like on, on a big scale. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And it's cool how, um, easy it is to talk to successful people. Like they're not like, <laughs> they're not as guarded as people would think. Yeah. Especially with a podcast. I, I promise you, if you're listening to this and you're debating on whether you should go to college or you're debating on whether you should buy another course or, a just start a podcast and reach out to people and say, I would love to interview you on my show. Mm -hmm. And you know, you'll, these people will sit down and tell you about their entire life and the steps they've taken to get there and you know, their hardships and things they've overcome and sit down and talk to you for an hour of the day. And you, all you have to do is post it, send them the link, post it on YouTube, send them, send them the link. So that way they don't feel like they just got scammed out of an hour of the day. Right. Yep. And, and then boom. Now you can, you know, you just tested your idea before you even get into it. And now you know whether or not you should get into real estate. Like if I knew about podcasting before, I would just, you know, interview top, you know, my top 10 realtors in my city and see what it's like. I could have saved myself a whole lot of time. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Well, awesome, man. What's one way you like to take care of yourself? One way I love to take care of myself is going to the gym. I feel like, especially as a young man, um, you should be in, you know, in, in prime physique year round prime, you know, because it's not the whole idea with like, Oh, summer bad and winter and broken, you know, getting chubby in the winter. It's like, you're, you're just letting yourself go intentionally. Yeah. And why would you let yourself go? If this is the only temple, the only body that we have. Right. And it's not like, you know, a lot of parts of our body, you know, can't properly heal. Right. So like once our brain starts deteriorating, good luck. Right. And once we hit 25, it starts going downhill, right? Slowly, of course, but there's things we could do pre to prevent it. And it's like, we should, oh, and I know so many people too, as I said, I just turned 21, like um, four months ago. So I, there's so many people I know from high school that just let themselves go. Yep. And it's like, we haven't actually even hit our prime years and you don't have to, you know, go play college sports or go to the league or anything like that. It's just like, just taking care of ourselves. We have an obesity crisis in the U.S. It's, you know, it's horrible. Mm -hmm. Just taking care of yourself is a vital importance. Whether, and a lot of times when you start getting busy with life, you know, we, you know, stop going to the gym. We stop eating right. We stop eating, eating healthy because we're trying to make ends meet. And we have to realize, like, if we're not our best self, we'll never be able to accomplish all that God has in store for us. So uh, working out is also a great escape as well. But it's definitely my hands down, like, one of my favorite things to do. Yeah. Love it. And what's one action step you can take? Oh, what's up? I was going to say, quick disclaimer. I don't enjoy the pain of working out. <laughs> I just enjoy the results. So I, I don't love working out because, you know, I, I hit the gym and my muscles hurt. And I'm one of those guys like, yeah, this feels so good. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't ever feel good. <laughs> but the result is all is well worth it. I just had to throw in that disclaimer. <laughs> 
I I'm one of those guys. I love feeling sore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're, 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 you're a small percentage of the, of the population, bro. <laughs> I, the, the only lift that I like absolutely dread doing is squats. And it's just, <laughs> it has such a, it takes such a mental toll on me. Like when I meet the squat bar and I go to lift, I'm like, it just, it wrecks me. Not many things yeah. wreck me like that, but it makes me contemplate my life. My, my literal uh, <laughs> nervous system activates and i have to go yeah. every time before i squat it's just insanity but uh really um, yeah i still love my legs being sore but i hate yeah. the act of squatting every other lift i can kind of tolerate i can kind of yeah. like, like it but um try and get into calisthenics too it's something i've been getting into mm-hmm. um that i've gotten into last year and like you always look like the cool guy because everyone's doing the basic workouts and they probably have like a th- you know ten thousand pounds on the bench bar but it's like you can't do a handstand push-up i bet can you yeah. Right. And so it's like do it calisthenics just I feel like it gives you a whole nother like gym, you know, credibility. It's like, oh that oh, guy's yeah, that guy's official. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, those dudes who can do like the even the like simple I feel like a simple calisthenic, like one of the first steps would be able to yeah. like do a pull up and then what are those called where you muscle pull ups? Yourself? Yeah, the muscle yeah. ups. Yeah, can't do it to this day. And it's like, <laughs> I, I'm a pretty strong guy when it comes to like bench and squat, but calisthenics is just another, it's a different type of strength. It's just, it's stabilizer muscles. That's what it is. Most of it, most of it is stabilizer muscles and uh, being able to, if you think about it, most of calisthenics is holding yourself in different positions and things like that. So it's like the muscle. And like, for me, like, I, so I don't lift heavy anymore, but I'm right right now around like 175. My top bench was 285. And it made a big jump once I started doing handstand pushups and working on handstands because my stabilizer muscles, like once you get to those heavier weights, you know, if you're, if you're not sturdy, good luck pushing it up. Yep. But like once I started doing calisthenics, my shoulders got so sturdy. My stabilizer muscles became so strong. Like I was able to, I wouldn't say I threw it up, but I probably could have went to 295, honestly, um, or maybe like 290. I, I, mind, I was at 175 when I did it. In pajamas, I just kind of walked in the gym, warmed up, and hit it. Uh, but it's like the the stabilizer muscles they 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 got so strong that when I was had those big weights on, I wasn't underneath, you know, shaking and crumbling. It was like I was able to like control it down and control it up. Yeah, dude, that's what's up. Maybe I'll need to do that because my yeah. bench has been pretty stuck at two seventy five for basically really? my whole like since high school. I never really pushed past two seventy five. Might be a mental block, but maybe it's the stabilizers. Yeah, for me, I couldn't pass for like, I, I also don't deadlift heavy and I don't lift anything heavy anymore. But for deadlift, I couldn't hit 400. I oh. I did every, I would rep 365 <laughs> and something about that, the 400 that just like yep. all my muscles shut down. I gotcha. I gotcha. Yeah, maybe I'll have to hit those stabilizers and my fiance will probably like that a, a bit more. <laughs> anyway. Well, cool, man. Uh, we're going to have to run through these next couple questions because we've got about eight minutes. So okay. what is one action step you can take right now or continue to take to meet and work with either Gary Keller, John Lee Dumas, or Russell Brunson? One step that I could take right now to meet with Gary Keller is to interview um, Mark King's business partner because that's going to open a door to Mark King and that's going to open a door to so on and so forth. Gotcha. There we go. Love it. All right, now we're going to jump into our last series of questions, and these can get a bit personal. So if you want to pass on any of them, just be like, I'm a pass. I'll be like, okay, cool. What is one limiting belief that continues to pop up in your life, if any? One limiting belief that continues to pop up is I don't have enough for that. Mm. I, don't have, I don't have enough right now. And it's like, if I, I know, like, I check my bank account, and I know it's like I don't have enough realistically speaking but it's also like saying that also then manifests me to not be able to have enough right so it's like you know uh trying to get rid of that um i'd say is it has been difficult um especially too because i'm in a stage right now for real estate that would have made a lot of money but now taking a step back to do the podcast but it's 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 a long-term play is it even real estate is a pretty long-term play but like but this podcast is even longer term play, but I know it's, it's leading to a lot more fulfillment and just being, um, no matter what goes on in kind of life, just being able to sleep in the middle of the storm, right. Yeah. And be calm while everyone else is panicking. And no matter what, you know, my bank account is saying, no matter what, you know, my income is saying, it's like being able to, you know, be at rest in the middle, in the, in the middle of the storm is, uh, probably the big thing 
that I need to focus on, especially this upcoming chapter of my of my life. I feel that. I feel that. And do you have any actions, whether they are daily, weekly, monthly, or annually, that come as a result of that belief that you don't have enough for that right now? It's It can be an action or an inaction, but you have that belief, thought, feeling leads to this action. Uh, if, if you're asking me, you're asking me what like triggers that belief, essentially, not what, what triggers that belief, more of a limiting action that reinforces yeah. that belief. So it's like I don't have enough, so I'm not going to buy that thing, and then you don't yeah. buy that thing, which would take you to the next level, and so you're reinforcing that belief. Does that make sense? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So for example, like for me, um, I was going to go to uh, a couple podcasting events. Um, for example, I, the one I'm going to in January, right? Mm-hmm. I. I, so I did it. I bought an Airbnb to save money, but I know for any conferences, when you're in the hotel, like one, it makes it so much more convenient, but two, you can do so much more networking. Yeah. And it's like these connections, but it's like, I don't have enough. Right. So I, just, I took the Airbnb route and it's like, so it's like for the next one, I want to be in the hotel. If you're ever going to a conference, it's always better in the hotel because you don't have to worry about Ubers. You don't have to worry about, you know, going back after, you know, a long night of networking because there's always networking functions and things like that. And so it's like, it makes everything so much easier and you're able to make so much more connections. But like, because I don't have enough now for that, I decided to go to Airbnb route and, you know, things like that. And then it kind of, as I said, it kind of reinforces it um, a little bit. And as, yeah, I'd probably say that that's probably one of the most one is like, for example, like, there was like a podcast coaching thing um, that I could have paid for. That was like 8,000 bucks, but I was like, I don't have enough. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, but I know if I did that, I could easily pay that off with the money I'll make from going through that. Yep. But then I, I decided to pass. And then after the new year, they bumped their prices up to like 12,000. So I was like, <laughs> sheesh. <Yeah>. So <laughs> uh, there's that. So skipping on an opportunity like that is something that keeps on reoccurring. I got you. I got you. Well, if you were to change that limiting belief of I don't have enough for that right now into an abundant phrase that really spoke to your heart, what yeah. would the phrase be? How can I have enough? I love that. I love it because it's built on like an assumption. Yeah. It's like possible and it's there how can i get it kind of like yeah. Grant Cardone would go he'd wake up he'd say who has my money today it's like somebody <laughs> coming to my pocket yeah. who has it <laughs> yeah grant Cardone. he's a funny guy bro yeah he's a I lo- he's a he's a he's a character bro I, and he's he knows his stuff too which makes it all the better yeah yeah no for sure um well cool man i think that's all we got for you on the show uh today actually i'm gonna last i'm gonna ask this last question i'm just gonna yeah. do it <laughs> we're gonna be pushing the timeline here but i'm gonna do it so i want to frame this next question alex formosi talks about the difference between manipulation and help being intent and i think his point here is that you're influencing people in both situations but manipulation is about getting somebody to do something you want them to do while help is about seeking to understand what somebody else wants and then helping them get there so this question is going to be about helping people not manipulating yeah, now, there's a common saying that you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. I yeah. actually found out from Dr. Alan Leica, who was a guest on my show, that you can make a horse drink. You just have to salt its oats. Now, I want you to think of a person with a really fixed mindset, not willing to accept help, not willing to accept change, but they hate their life. How do we create an environment to salt their oats and help them change their life? The first, it always starts internally. Mm-hmm. So the first question is. You know, how do we make them problem aware? A lot of the time when you're stuck in one way of living, you're stuck in one way of being, that's because it's something that you've always lived and been, and been at. And it gets exponentially harder as you get older because by the time you're 35, your neurological pathways, are, most of them are already set, right? And it gets even harder, you know, because also 90 to 95% of what we do every day is subconscious, right? So it starts internal. How, how, do, we be, how do we make them internally aware? that that issue was there. That's the first step. And then the second step from there is how do we make them aware that this is what the issue leads to and that's not a good place. And, you know, for the most part, if they don't want to go to a better place, the way you have to, some people move away, move towards pleasure. Other people move away from pain. 
And if the the living a better life is enough to mo- motivate them, just how do we make that idea of pain like that, like you know, a regret it may be or it may be staying overweight, whatever. How do we make that pain so strong that it's like, if you don't want to move from it, you're borderline insane or just entirely ignorant or we're just not speaking in the actual language that you can communicate in. Like, how do we make that pain so crystal clear that they want to move away from it? And then from there, I guess the next step would be having someone to lay out the game plan. Cause confusion, a confused buyer always says no, right? A confused person is never going to start something. How do we make the steps so crystal clear, so easy to understand and grasp that they feel like they actually have a chance to get out of their current situation. Mm -hmm. Right. And then from there, you know, helping them guide through. But I, I say that's a great first start is making them internally aware of the issue, right? Then making them get putting the the pain around, you know, that you know where that leads to if they continue on living in that way, and having it be so crystal clear that hey, this is horrible. This is the worst thing you could possibly do ever. That they actually feel compelled, I guess, to move away from it. And then once they feel compelled enough to move away from it. You know, they still might not move away because they're confused. Having that that game plan and having that, like, here's how you can get out of it. And it, it, it's going to vary depending on what industry you want to be in or what your issue is. But, like, generally speaking, I feel like that would be a good three-step framework to help get them in the right direction. There we go. I love it. Well, awesome, John. That is <laughs> all we got for you on the show today. Thanks so much for coming on. Thanks so much for having me. I genuinely appreciate it, you know, chatting with you today. And I, I, you know, I, I trust that I dropped some, uh, you know, nuggets or pieces of wisdom in there for your listeners. Facts, facts. You definitely did, man. And yeah, if you guys are listening to this and you loved what John had to say, make sure to check out the Walk to Wealth podcast. The ways to do so will be down in the show notes. All the ways to contact John will also be down in the show notes. Check out his virtual conferences. And are they conferences? They're virtual summits. Virtual summits. Oh, the same name, right? And they're, yeah. they're, all, they're all synonyms. <laughs> there we go. There we go. And yeah, just check them out. Thanks. Thank you guys for watching. We will see you on the next one. And on that note, we're out.